Hello, welcome to AR on AR. I'm Adam Rose. And today, as you can see behind me, I'm going to be talking about bikes and bike boxes. Specifically, how to pack your bike into a bike box, which is something which challenges, especially newcomers to adventure races. So I'm going to show you my way of doing it and hopefully demystify the process. Okay, so just to explain my setup, I've got a 29 inch hardtail here. Um, so, you know, 29 inch wheels, slightly bigger than the 27.5. And the bike box itself is the standard that you get in all expedition races, certainly. So it's 140 centimeters wide, it's 80 centimeters tall, and it's 30 centimeters deep. And if I can fit this bike into that bike box pretty neatly, which I'm gonna show you, you know, you should be able to do the same thing. And of course, this is just my way of doing things. You might find, uh, other people have variations on the idea. All right, now, just in terms of what generally happens, you know, you want to minimize the amount of alterations you make to the bike when you put it into the bike box. You want to simplify it. So, of course, when you take the bike out, it's going to be a quick assembly. So, just to explain what I'm going to be doing, I will not loosen the handlebars. I'll simply turn them sideways, and that'll be sufficient. Um, the map board, which, you know, you might have as an adventure racer, this is, is a pretty uh, straightforward one. If I loosen it underneath, I can just tilt it if I need to tilt it to fit it into the bike box. Um, some, some map boards are quite tall and they use Allen keys to loosen it, you know, a little bit more complicated. So for some bikes, you might actually have to remove the map board to fit it inside the box. When it comes to the pedals, um, you'll have to take off at least one pedal. Uh, you can get away with just removing the single pedal although taking off both pedals isn't much of a, a problem and it probably fits things uh, more efficiently if you take both pedals off. Um, and then in terms of the seat, I've got to drop a seat post. So what I would do is drop this seat post down. So that is sufficient for me to fit it inside the bike box. And then lastly, of course, I've got to take the wheels off. I've got to take both wheels off. And my bike is fitted with through axles. Um, which is similar to quick release axles. So either way, whatever bike you have, you've obviously got to have axles that you can remove very, very quickly. You don't want uh, axles that require you to use an Allen key or something like that or a spanner to take them off. But really you'll see qu with quite a minimal amount of effort, I can get this bike into the box. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the bike to one side first of all so you can have a look. Um, if I show you what's inside this bike box, Okay, so it's empty at the moment, and at the bottom here, I've got a, a big block of uh, foam, like sponge. So this is what I've got. It's pretty dense foam. Um, it's not polystyrene or anything like that, and you can, you can usually pick this stuff up when you buy an appliance, a washing machine, or a cooker, or something like that. Um, it's very dense. The reason I have this is because the chain ring at the front of the, uh, where the pedals are, where the cranks are, it's gonna sit on this foam, and that way, that chain ring won't damage the bottom of the box. And of course, the chain ring itself won't get damaged. Very easy to, to, to find. And I've stuck it to the bottom of my bike box with double-sided tape, copper tape. Um, it hasn't budged since I've put it in there. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the bike apart as I would in a race. And get into the bike box. Okay, so I'll take the pedals off. A big spanner like this, I would leave it in the bike box. I wouldn't obviously carry it with me. And for those who are new to doing this, the pedals always come off in the same direction. So you rotate them both in this way um, towards the front of the bike. Okay. And then the wheels. Okay, now the way I put the bike into the box is I put it upright. I don't put it down into the box upside down. Some people do, but I just find it more efficient if I put it in upright. But before I do, I've got to take one precaution. Some of you might not know this, but with modern mountain bikes having hydraulic brakes, once you take the wheels out, if you squeeze the brake lever, there are two possibilities that are going to happen. There are pistons, you know, that pinch the uh, brake disc. And if I press the brake lever now, those pistons are going to push in 
And the net result of that is when I try to reassemble my bike, put the wheel back in, the disc is not going to fit anymore because the, push, the, the pistons are pushed in. So I don't want those uh, pistons to push in. And in a worst case scenario, if you press the brake lever too far, the pistons will go so far as to bleed and allow air into the system. So once you get the wheel back in, jump on your bike and start trying to use it, uh, the brakes won't work at all because you've got air into the system. So um, this is a precaution that I recommend. You can go and buy brake pad spacers. Uh, you can buy them commercially, but instead here's a very, very simple solution. This is just a piece of CD, regular CD or DVD. I've just cracked it in half. I've put some duct tape onto it because that makes it slightly thicker, which is equivalent to the thickness of a disc brake. So I put this between the pads and it's jammed in there. And that way, if the, the levers get accidentally triggered, this is going to function just like the disc and prevent any failure. Okay. Now you might say, well, I'm, I'm just not going to push the brake levers, you know, <laughs> because I know the wheels aren't inserted. But uh, the reality is, in the middle of a race, you're tired, you pick up the bike by the handlebars, and you just, you know, it's an instinct to grab the brake levers. Or even if you are cautious about that happening, you know, if you're, if you're really tired and your teammate's going to assemble your bike for you, all they've got to do is pick up the bike and trigger those brakes, and suddenly you're in, in a real world of pain. So, either buy the brake pad inserts, or just use a piece of CD with a little bit of duct tape. Okay, now I'm going to get the bike in. So just to show you the bike going in. So it fits in quite easily. And the, um, the chain ring is sitting on that block of foam. The second thing you put in should be your wheels. And I put the cassette on the inside. I don't want it to get damaged. And the disc, you know, up against the side of the box because it's broader. So. So I put one wheel on one side of the bike and the other wheel on the other side of the bike. Again, it's up to you which method you want to use. But that's, that's pretty decent. Okay, and then uh, what you want to do is you know, put in all the bits and pieces. So I've got the spanner and the pedals. And my skewers, uh, you know, my, my axles. Now, I could just throw them in the box, but that's a bad idea again, because when it comes time to rebuilding the bike, what I don't want is these things just lying all over the place. And you, you won't only have this equipment in the bike box more than, uh, more than likely. So I want to be efficient that I can find them and retrieve them, and they're not all scattered all over the bottom. Okay, so what I've got here, you could use any container. I've just got these two cardboard boxes. And... They contain all the bits and pieces that I, I have that are relating to my bike. So I've got Allen keys and cone spanners, an extra puncture kit, um, something like a, a Leatherman type tool, you know, with pliers. And I'll just put the axles and the pedals into these things. And that way, when I need to find them at the other end at the transition, it's going to be really simple for me to do this. You'll also notice I've put my name on these things, uh, and I've got an A and a B. Um, you might think that's a bit weird, but, you know, if I go into transition and I leave one of these on the ground and I don't know about it, if somebody finds it, they know who it belongs to, and they, you know, by knowing A and B, I know which box they found. So, I'm just going to put these into the bike box, just somewhere where I know they're going to be easy to find, so I'm putting them near the, the rear part of the bike. This is too big to fit in it, but I put it together with all those bits and pieces. Okay, now a few other little things just to, to, to keep in consideration. I've got a pair of pedals here. Now, I recommend at least one team member carry a spare set of pedals. Uh, obviously not every team member needs to do this. And the kind that I've got here, they've got um, SPD cleats and they've also got a wider cage so they can be used for trail running shoes. So at least one team member should have an extra pair. Just put those in the box. Of course, you're going to be putting your helmet in the box. Now, you know, where do you put all this stuff? You're just packing it around the bike 
uh, wherever there's space, but also so that the bike doesn't rattle around. So here I've got, you know, a dry bag. You're likely to have a dry bag with extra clothes and, you know, anything that, that can be jammed into the box. And I'm just going to put it in any large space. Here I've got some water. You know, this would be a, a, a bag, a seat bag. Now just in terms of, of putting things like liquids and foods, um, some races will not allow you to do that. And they're concerned with, you know, obviously with liquids, they could potentially leak. Um, and another reason is there'll be a weight limit on the bike boxes. And usually the maximum will be 30 kilograms. So it depends on the race itself, on the, on the organization itself, the race director. They will tell you at the race, you know, so many kilograms allowed for the bike box. And they'll, they'll check it on a set of scales to make sure that you're not exceeding that weight. Um, and they may or may not say you're allowed to put food and water in there. But, you know, in the best case scenario, you can use the bike box just like any transition box to pack as much kit as possible. Okay, what I've got here are two pieces of like play mat or foam. The reason you might want to have these in your bike box, they don't weigh anything, but they've got multiple uses. So if I just come and show you, you know, your bike is precious, no doubt it costs you a bit of money. You might want to put these between, let's say, the wheels and the frame just to protect that frame from getting scratched or damaged or anything. So I would just jam this kind of thing, you know, between different parts of the bike so they don't bash against each other and scratch and scrape. And this has uh, other potential uses. For example, if I get to a transition, uh, that take the bike box out, but they don't have undercover. So you're out on a muddy field, it's wet, it's muddy. I could use this to sit on, I could use this to change my shoes. So I, can, I could even use it to, I could put them together and it's efficient for my torso to lie down and, and, and catch 25 minutes, you know, so, uh, of sleep. So you could use these for all sorts of things, including protecting the bits of the bike, as you see down here, so that the, the wheel doesn't damage the side of the box. And then lastly, I've got uh, a rubbish bag, a, a black bin bag. These have 101 uses. So I always recommend you have one in your bike box. You know, just put it at the very, very bottom if you need to. But it's there to take, um, you know, bits of kit. Uh, when you come into transition, maybe you filthy, muddy, disgusting, and you change your clothes. This is also a good thing to put it in. So by the time you get back to civilization, you know, maybe a few days later, the bike box doesn't stink to high heaven. You've you retained all the smells inside this, this bin bag. And then also, this could even double up as a raincoat, you know, as, as some sort of wet weather gear. Believe me, these things are the most efficient way of keeping the rain off you, not your fancy Gore-Tex jacket. This is the only thing that really works that's 100% waterproof and it, it, it helps uh, retain your body warmth. So a useful thing and it weighs absolutely nothing. You should keep it in your bike box. In terms of my bike box, this is a drop-in style bike box and it's the kind that I prefer. I find it more efficient. It's easier to put my bike away. So, and I would also argue it's a little bit stronger than the other kinds of bike box. So. The alternative is something known as a clamshell design. Instead of dropping the bike in, the bike box, you lay it out on the ground and it opens like a clamshell or like a suitcase. So you literally open it up, you put the bike in and then you close the lid and then you secure it. Um, some of my team have used those and they're quite happy with them. Uh, one of the benefits of having a clamshell uh, uh, style bike box is it's potentially easy to find things because you know you've got a broader access to the bike box and also I've seen some smaller people actually climb inside a clamshell bike box and go to sleep when it's raining and they've got nowhere else to sleep in the middle of a, a transition in the middle of nowhere so you could potentially uh, consider that as an advantage for the clamshell design but this bike box I built it in 2013 and it's still going strong so you know drop-in style design it's more popular anyway and it works for me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to assemble the bike from scratch, take it out, and we'll time how long it takes. So we can see, although this is not race conditions, it gives you a rough idea of how long it would take somebody in ideal conditions to get the bike fully assembled from being packed away. Okay, and there. Okay, that was about three and a half minutes. All right, the bike's ready to go. Pedals are done. Everything's secure. Pop my seat up. Okay, so as I say, that's in, in 
ideal conditions, but in a race when you're tired, you, uh, maybe the weather's bad, maybe it's the middle of the night, it could obviously take a, a fair bit longer. Okay, I just want to talk about the rear derailleur for a second. You'll notice that I didn't unscrew this before I uh, put the bike into the back box. Some people feel it's necessary to take this off. You can see there's a little screw over here. I'd undo this, and then the whole uh, rear mechanism would come off. It'd still be connected by the gear cable. The reason I didn't do that is because, in my experience, a bike in a back box doesn't undergo that amount of punishment that it's likely that this derailleur hanger would get damaged, or the derailleur would get damaged. I've never had a problem with that. Where you're likely to encounter damage is when you're shipping the bike, maybe on, on the aeroplane, they just throw the bike boxes around at the airport. They're not, they're not as careful generally as race organizations tend to be. So yes, um, if you really want to be careful, you could undo this and then it's going to be hanging loose. So the way you secure that is uh, use a zip tie or some Velcro, ideally some Velcro, because you can undo that really easily and it, uh, uh, tie it to the seat stay over here or to the chain stay over there. But in my experience, it hasn't been necessary. And also, just as a, a word of advice, um, because these derailleur hangers, yes, they can get damaged, I recommend you always have one with you. Um, and ideally, the, it matches all the bikes um, for the entire team, or at the very least, you've got one for your own bike. So that, you know, if where these usually get broken or damaged is if you're riding down the trail and a branch gets inside, it gets caught in the derailleur and it pulls it back violently and it snaps it. So that is something that I, I'm quite concerned about, but I've never had an issue with the bike box. So, you know, that means it's one less thing for me to consider when I put the bike into the bike box. Okay, so that was my take on how you pack a bike box. I'm sure other people have other ideas. If you have any questions, just fire away and ask me. And ideally, in the not too distant future, I will also be producing an episode on how to create your own bike box from scratch, how to build it. So you can go out and buy one, of course, but you can build it, and either way, it's gonna be exactly the same size. So the instructions I've given you here, or the advice I've given you here, will apply no matter where you get the bike box from. All right, thanks so much. Hope it's been useful. Cheers.